festival which we are determined to have and we will have and we hope that the crowds pick up but that apart uh, it's it's a small informal kind of thing we have called some of the authors some of the people associated with books from different parts okay uh, the starting speaker today we have three speakers all of them are here on time the starting speaker is Dina Naik who uh, who actually is an artist I will also sit who's an artist from uh, trained in Bombay very much Goan mother studied at St. Mary's I know all the inside details <laughs> and we jokingly call her our cover girl which is a bit of a funny thing because cover girl means something else I know. Yeah, I know. I'm absolutely <laughs> unlike a cover girl <laughs> but she has done so many covers in Goa I think with me alone she must have done 140 plus with me and Broadway's overlapping some then other people so like she has got the claim to being the most used cover artist in Goa and while books might seem to be about the book itself there's a lot of behind as all of you all know being all of you all being authors and professors and whatever you know that putting together a book is also a technical job and uh, Bina's here Bookmakers to make books there are so many fields related one to writes it and one makes it yeah. history of the book is a related field very yeah. fascinating field yeah. which is close to academia and things like that so I will not come between you all and Bina, but I promised her one thing. I said I will spur you on with questions because she didn't want the trouble of preparing and all that. So I will push her and it's, a, it's more of a discussion. Anyone feel free to join in. Okay, so she will tell us about the process of making covers and whatever it is and she will take you to depths of how she goes into it. Burns the midnight oil. She's very good. She's ex Father, father, fan, fan. father, just because of the noise. Ah, okay. Yeah, if you don't mind. We'll put it on. Okay. We'll, we'll put some other here. So she... Uh, she, she, she spends a lot of time over it. She studied at JJ College of Art. And you know, today we tend to think that uh, covers are nothing. A book uh, cover doesn't make much of a difference to a book, which is not true. Judge a book by its cover, everyone yeah, says. Which is not true. So my wife always tells me, your books are, if your books are selling, it's because of Bina, <laughs> because of you. That's what she said. <laughs> Very unflattering, I must say. But Bina will be happy for what. So there's so much science that goes into this cover design. You can take, you can take from Canva, you can take a template and create a cover, but you know, uh, there are so many nuances and niceties that unless you are in the field, you will not appreciate it. So, so in that sense, you know, like for example, she is very strict with, uh, I'll just finish by telling you one or two short episodes which, which put the story in context, I think. So, uh, initially when I would give her the cover specifications, I would tell her, Bina, I want this, I want that, I want that. So, the first time she cut me in my tracks and she said, okay, so you want me to do a DTP job for you then? She said, you would want me to do a DTP. DTP means rest of publishing. So I will tell you what to do. You just lay it out there. So she put her foot down. And after that, we have kept our borders very firm. And I know that I can interfere, intervene, interfere with all the editorial aspects of it. You know, I can tell her that, Bina, I want a serious cover. I want a light cover. I want a green cover. I want a, you know, a very uh, academic looking cover. But I cannot tell her what to put where. Because she has her own artistic sense of... of uh, you know, weight, all these concepts of, uh, you know, uh, images and text having weight and balance and color combinations. It's like your sari dressing centers. Now it's, only those it's elements of design. I, I'm so, talking all yeah. rubbish, but she will <laughs> correct okay. me. So I'll finish here. But but she uh, actually, you know, I, we, we have a very strange, uh, clear de definition. We don't interfere with her. And I tell my authors, please don't interfere with her. And I get scared to put my authors in touch with her because they don't know what she will accept. She has one thing, she'll give you three covers, if you don't like a cover, you reject it. But you cannot tell her, no, no, you put this up and that down and no, that she will not tolerate yeah. because there are many combinations and, and permutations going to it. Over to you, Bina, sorry for this long... No, 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 so, um, like you asked me a question, so, ask me a question. So, no, what is your process? Feel so, free to outline yeah. your process. What do you feel an author should know about book cover design? Okay, so um, like to start with, um, book cover design is like packaging. We in fact call it packaging. The way you would do like a label for any product, for it to stand out on the shelf and also give information of the product. The same way a cover has to tell you enough it has to look good enough to you know attract your attention and intrigue you to then read further very often what happens is since you mentioned academic books the titles itself are so long it's like a sentence and then there's a subtitle which is another three sentences 
so it feels like the entire story is being told on the cover and my thing always is to frederick like can can you shorten it because i already got everything on the cover why would i buy the book you know so and um, and sorry <laughs> yeah so so um, with the cover for the design to be good it starts with the title like for a designer an interesting title uh an interesting back cover blurb because uh, that's usually what uh, people will read and pick it up and that information is also enough for the designer to start designing the cover to conceptualize it so uh, having an interesting title is important and i'm i'm now getting into editorial space but also because i am an author and i also write so title is part of your packaging you cannot keep it separate you you have a captivating title that just is like 80% of the job done for you know selling the book for attracting audiences uh if uh, now very often when i work with frederick i'm limited because he does non fiction so usually i'll be given like a photograph like if it's a, a autobiography if it's a memoir then there will be the author's photograph or there'll be a family picture there'll be some house some picture to do with the story and i have to use that and with that and title and the subhead make an interesting design uh very often there's nothing and those are the best briefs for me when you give me a completely blank canvas and you say you know what there's no photograph so make a typographic design or just do an illustration on your own those are the ones i enjoy the most because then there's nothing which is i i just get to do whatever i feel like very often the author will have some idea in his head about what he wants to do it's good if you have that because it's your book and you know what you want to say in it it's it would be great if you share that with the designer and tell the designer even if you look at some 10 10 books from the market that you really like and how they look if you just tell i mean you can just download the cover so you tell the author and uh, tell the designer and uh, he or she will download the covers and have a look at them that just gives the designer an understanding of what the author is looking for very often it will be like you know a wild goose chase like we're just trying to figure out what it is you do three options they still don't like it then you do some more they still don't like it and eventually it will go back to something which is like completely different not good at all you know so and then you're like i give you such good designs and you want this uh, it will typically be some design they've done in microsoft word with some really bad fonts and you know uh, and some pictures taken from the net and they want to use that and then like frederick tries to explain that you know there are copyright laws attached and you can't use this use some of his photographs so those kind of problems happen so if if you have an idea of what you want please convey that in the beginning so i can i always do one option based on what the author wants and then i do one which i feel is good for the book so that's an option that's my option if you like it take it otherwise you go with your option and very often what i have done a lot of authors have said yeah actually this is better so i like that kind of freedom any designer likes that freedom to interpret because i feel the authors are very close to the subject and uh, it's only an outsider who can look at it differently and give a fresh perspective on what you know how to interpret that also it's a very tough subject because uh, transferring ideas is not easy job and like with all fields the author doesn't know what is possible and the artist doesn't know what the author wants sometimes yeah. sometimes but very often you end up with giving good uh, uh, ideas like say uh, for example just to give a few ideas this is a novel set in uh, set in uh, nutoli initially so he talks about his house being broken and all that, that uh, ruins and all that so i think bina this is your sketch no it's mamuna no, sketch no, it's mamuna sketch, sketch. then this Who's is mamuna lavekal now 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 you just picked up some random books just some not necessarily the, the best of what best. she likes okay. 
and and what the author likes or not what Dina likes. Actually, I, I still say that the first cover that I did for you, which is Valmiki Falerio's book, which is not released, which you can. It He's was the best. called Tongue's Tale. That was the best because I used some of my own illustrations. You didn't. Have, you were not. You'd still not got into a format at that point. Some so, things we have we have illustrations for. So this one is about a, a novel. It's it's about uh, sorry about the Mando in uh, in in Salset. So and we found it so difficult to 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 uh, to illustrate it. And we didn't know how to illustrate it, and it was a very rainy day. And I got that photo, and when we went to these people's houses, the Costa, uh, Father Costa's relations, uh, it was very gloomy inside. So for a little while, the sun came out, and uh, we said, "Let's take a photo outside." And they, they were actually shocked. They said, "No, no, no, that's not where we take the photo. We sing the mandal. We don't go to the grass and sing it there. We don't sing it outside." So I said, "Don't worry, don't worry. Artists will play around with it." So we have taken these two people from outside on the grassy, Lighted, grassy setting, lighting at at night at and night. all that. And then we've yeah. taken a, we've taken a chandelier from yeah. uh, from our book uh, book lover uh, Sujata Norona's house, and she has combined it both, and it looks like a fantastic picture. Sometimes we just don't have a cover. Like, how do you illustrate a book this, on this dual This I illustrated. So she's she's taken a book this on dual pots. This is completely done in computer. And <laughs> she's done it. She's uh, we to, uh, played up on this Undra Maja Mama. We said forget about calling it Goan dual pots and all. It sounds so boring. We just call it Undra Maja Mama because it's so well known. <laughs> and uh, we did it that way. And this is another book published by the Dempo Trust, uh, where uh, Isabella Santarita Vaz's brother, uh, Professor uh, sorry uh, Louis Santarita Vaz, talks about the visitors to Goa when he visited Goa. It was difficult to illustrate, but uh, you know his. These were maps and these were all uh, royalty-free stuff uh, yeah. from Wikipedia. Yeah. So, yeah, Wikipedia is a huge help, especially when you're doing. Copyright. Uh, so she is amazing with her, with her, with her colors, with her combinations, with her type, typograph, typographies, types. She is also a published author. She has written her own book, so she understands it very well. Sometimes, the author will feel that uh, this is not what I want. so that's that happens in one out of 100 or three out of 100 chances very often the author is very happy you know with uh, with what bina gives and they are quite impressed and they say wow like fantastic because they don't see the possibilities so my point is father that even even if we can do the cover ourselves in in uh, in say uh, page maker or something you know it's always better to get some professional help i'm not saying bina only get some professional help and even yeah. dtp although i say dtp they they are also very good they are right now everybody is of a decent uh, expertise not like when we started that how it used to be ghastly no yeah now uh, everybody is uh, uniformly good basic people have understood i was just looking at uh, one of uh, the old books published uh, by uh, amita salatri published in 86 on cookery Recipes. by rajawans mm. and the full printing and everything in 86 we didn't have the technology to do it today things have improved a lot the cover design has improved which are your favorite covers and what what uh, what goes Big into making them your favorite right now by the way just she mentioned tongue she mentions tongue yeah. tongue tongue tail, tail. Yeah. that is a very funny book where well, you must tell why it why it got canned Valmiki has collected 666 uh, Konkani sayings, and he's got special sections on G and X. The G and X of Konkani is the F's and B's of English. So, first there was a debate over that. I think uh, Edward Falero or someone told him, "Shi shi shi te galna ka te sabne por kariya de se don't don't include that." It's part of don't the language. Don't include that. Yeah, it's part of the. So I said, "You must keep it. You must keep it." So he goes into all these, uh, you know, foul language, foul words, and all where there are sayings in that. so that was one small debate but along the way uh, of course why it got canned was see never this is off topic mm. never show a book to someone else before you publish it is it publish it no that's the problem we showed it to someone who some of you all know we will not take any names here and that person was very critical of it he said it's terrible it's no it needs to be improved instead of giving three versions of each saying you should give five or seven or something no four or something like that you know mm. one more version So I think when you get this negative feedback, it can put you off. It can put you quite off. In fact, no. We we need to collect all this foul language. Yeah. In, in I think you should ask him to revive. Rashaul, when I was a Rashaul, yeah, there was a woman 
is to come in the work up and she used to have sometimes problems with her, uh, with her head mm -hmm. and she used to fire bad words she could not uh, stop see uh, who was there and i would be i would i would take uh, interest in in, uh, in learning in, in not learning in hearing come. <laughs> in hearing or that yeah. when i was in when i was in uh, neura there was one man he, he fired uh, bad words and often i used to tell him because a good friend of mine uh, he used to tend his cows yeah. i used to tell him <laughs> no, but this is part of the richness of the language. Yeah. I fully agree that, you know, we should, and there is a theory also, since much of these books, sorry, with due respect, have been compiled by priests and, you know, and religious, they felt that it was inappropriate and they probably kept it out of, you know, but uh, it's part of the language. So May I add a little more? Yeah, yeah, please. I think if we had a late father, Anton, Anton Pereira. He says something beautiful regarding this. Anything bad word, any bad word, it has the richness of the language. That is what he has said. That's why so it was I would have bad words in concrete. So he said it comes with that because that is uh, giving rise to fertility. Yeah. And fertility is that cannot be translated, huh? Yeah. yeah, that is the richness. Which is the next session. Yes. <laughs> but but coming back to covers, so in that sense, uh, which is your best and uh, why? Your favorite? I don't remember. <laughs> there are so many. No, I don't talk about my own. There are too many children, so you can't choose which yeah. is your favorite. But, uh, okay, off late, like, um, one of the covers that I had liked was um, Amita Karnekar's book, which was black and with dots. The, the new Buddha. book? The new no, book? not the no. new one. It's the one on Buddha's story told by his wife. Uh, the whole Buddha head was made with just dots. It was very simple and graphic. So I'd like that and told her to that time. So that was one good cover. Then, um, recently have I seen any good How long the full process takes you from idea to implementation? The, see, if, if, I, if it's something interesting, it can immediately spark and then in like an hour I will sit and do most of it. Then I'll sit on it next day morning, I'll get up and I'll have one more idea, I'll do one more maybe. And then I'll, like before before I send you three, I've already done five, six In your myself. head? In your head? Also no, on actually paper. done sometimes and sometimes in my head. Uh, but I will only send three, otherwise the mix and match that happens can be endless, the permutations and combinations. So, uh, I can't remember. That's interesting. I, I prefer simple graphic covers. I, I don't like complicated ones. I like covers that have, uh, you know, the striking one, one or two line uh, titles and. Uh, Supposing there's a conflict between the author and the designer, who prevails? Ultimately, it's the author who will prevail because uh, it's, it's their book. book. But I, I don't know. Um, See, if you're self-publishing, then the author has yeah. a huge say because he's paying for it also. Uh, if you're going through the traditional route, Publishing. the publisher has a major say because they, they have to market it. So that's when you see the best book designs. What are your advice to authors who want to design a cover? Like I said, start with the title. When you're thinking of the title itself, it has to be catchy. It has to be something that will stop people in their tracks. The, your story, it's a given. I'm saying it has to be, if you're publishing it, it's a given that the story is a showstopper. The story is going to catch you, like grab you by your neck and... Not all topics, you. not all topics. Okay, we're not talking about academic books. because not, that's Non-fiction like, also, non-fiction. Non-fiction... Also can be interesting, no? I mean, not like Yvonne, stories of the survivors, yeah, songs so of the was, songs of the survivors. Yeah, she, so that was a very. She spent a long time thinking of that. Yeah, so the, that was such a harrowing story. So that pathos, all of that has to come on the cover. So that is how I would look at it. Like, what it does it? Should it shock you? 
what is the content of the book so those are the things i look at i don't always get my way because the author has a completely different view but usually when it's like a uh, like the traditional publishers they are very strict on how a cover looks and i was just talking to ivon before like now book designers have to not just design for the bookshelf at the bookstore they have to design for amazon bookstore so not only so this not only this but also this yeah we have to test our designs in a thumbnail size now so it's no longer 4 by 8 or 6 by 9 it's Five now 1.5 by whatever so that's the size in this size it should look is good is your title readable that's what that's the thing in a one inch size can your title be read can your can the author's name be read so when one of your writers recently is constantly been saying reduce the author's name reduce the author's name i'm thinking an amazon will not even be read then what's the point you know so these are the things we already know which the author probably doesn't think about what bina is saying is that uh, looking at the world from a author's point of view and looking at the world from a designer's point of view are very different and uh, we the helpless publishers have to act as the go between try to convince them what is see because as far as the text is concerned you are the boss we cannot uh, she or me cannot put in things which you are not comfortable with but there was one thing in the second book that they put a blurb maria arrow photo on the cover on the front cover mm -hmm. which i didn't really want and i didn't know that it would be there that is your king no bigger publisher see the only thing is bigger publishers tend to see. tend to have they it's a marketing decision yeah, to be fair to them decision. to be fair to them no like uh, selma carvalho's book has shashi tharoor's blurb right on the cover front cover so that's is what they do picture or no, just, no, no just just a blurb just a, a, a super so there's a title right. there are yeah. other things written there yeah. and on top of that there's a blurb yeah so it takes away from the no but see it's a balancing act between art she the marketing the, the and author and marketing like this book and marketing so how do you balance off these competing like interests i very rarely see blogs on your your uh, yeah these are really small yeah, this was this is too much this is too too much it's not readable correct like now i'm older since this book happened i could read it and now i need glasses to read this so that's a severe criticism of me which i accept but uh, you know that is how the negotiation process takes place mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't agree at 3 o'clock in the night she and valmiki falero are arguing about the bindi on a lady's forehead hindu lady's forehead and bina is telling it why telling him why it's a patriarchal symbol and he <laughs> cannot get it for he doesn't want to accept that there's anything wrong with it and i'm the helpless guy caught in the middle <laughs> but <laughs> but it's a fascinating field because you are trying to balance of competing interests she is talking design someone else is talking marketing someone else is talking the authorship of the book and how their work is being perceived no it's your baby at the end of the day see as far as design goes no like we've done there's enough research that has been done about the different media now book cover is one media billboards is one media newspaper ads is one media when i started out in advertising they used to say that a billboard should have just five words your headline on the billboard should be five words because a car passing by can only take in that much when somebody is driving at say 40 let's assume in bombay everybody is driving at 10 and 20 so you know you can but so th there are certain things that have been brought down to a science five words on a billboard Uh, for a book cover i almost have it down pat like you know if if you have like a, a cover if you have like a title and if it's like few words put it above 50 points if you have the author's name minimum 36 points because these things when reduced to a small size will still be read it will come down to like it will be reduced to like 12 points which is readable 9 points is your newspaper type so we never recommend anything that goes beyond 9 points and 9 points 50 plus year olds cannot read only young people can read 9 points what you are saying is perfectly makes perfect sense from a point of view of an artist or even even uh, like you know visual yeah. readability but why that author was saying make it small no see they they have a different concern she is worried that 
having her name almost as big as a book name suggests vanity you know which i can get i get why she's saying that you know so and and your conception is that you know the balance has to be proper you can't have such yeah. a small uh, title as an author's name on top and such a big title down it falls out of visual balance mm. these are the that concept part, i'm it. just saying that uh, any element on the cover when you see because unless you're not going to be putting it online but everybody is selling online broadway uh, no, I get dog it. ears everybody is selling online now maybe um, this dog ears Uh, thumbnails are a little larger their website is slightly different okay. but like amazon is the amazon flipkart have become the standard like very often people will search for it there and what is the point of having something on the cover which will not be read in a thumbnail no, and something as important as an author any book. questions feel free to shoot this is not a technical uh, discussion by all means could you critique father's book i don't I mean don't to, want to. <laughs> okay <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. It's a question of taste. Yeah. It's a yeah, question of taste. What? It's a question of what you want, who you ask, and uh, your favorite colors. Your favorite colors. Yeah. So many things. So you might like it. Which is why I quietly asked Frederick whether he did it because I would have fired him on the side. <laughs> For which one? If For the any? cover. Father. But that's okay. I'm, I'm sometimes, so sometimes I get authors who say that. See, all our covers Bina does. But sometimes I get authors who say that we have our person who wants to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. which i respect yeah. which i go along with because you know you have your person you trust him yeah and you know this girl brenda kutino came up with a beautiful cover people buy the book because the cover is yeah her illustration it's a illustration yeah. she got yeah. she she's it's a she's it's a rem artist. reminiscences of no she's not an artist uh, brenda kutino the english lecturer from uh, from kepe or something are you talking like. about that book of hers a matter of time a matter of time yeah, you did yeah. the design but the, the illustration, is illustration is hers is hers yeah she, she got a friend to draw a old scene okay. from book Yeah, that's great. I mean, what is it? A landscape. It's just a typical Goan house with chicken and sort of oh. like the colors are very attractive. Yeah. Cover is the colors are very attractive. Yeah. No, it's it's not that uh, you know any one is more right than the other. It's a matter of taste, and uh, yeah, sometimes a a bad a good cover can sell a book. A good cover can sell a book, and sometimes maybe a book can sell despite a bad cover. No. A a good cover would have made will make a good book better. I'm looking if you go back in time, you know when they started the printing and everything, it was more the title. <coughs> yeah. And because the covers were very simple, they were either black or grey. Uh, oh, that was the limitation of printing. So they would very often have woodcut il illustrations. Mm -hmm. So if you see the old hardbound co mm -hmm. covers, they're very elaborate. In fact, the kind of fonts they used. It's so yeah, detailed. So it's, that was elaborate. Yeah. There was no pictorial. It was usually uh, two color printing, hardbound. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so and inside papers would almost always have woodcut illustrations. Yeah. So the cover generally kind of didn't distract in a sense. You know, some yeah. people buy it because oh, it's got a nice cover, and then you get bored with reading the book. You say, what is the point of buying it? Yeah. So sometimes do publishers do this? Do they kind of just want to attract your attention by a cover? So if you see, if you look at the covers of uh, Murakami, if you look at the mm -hmm. covers of Kafka, they are such strong personalities that the mm -hmm. cover will always be simple and graphic. Yeah, it will always and also because Japanese authors, yeah. so yeah. they they try to give that uh, yeah. aesthetic. So that also matters, you know, like the. I mean, what is the author writing about? Is it based in a particular place? So typically, if you are writing a book on Goa, we try to show the Goan, the Goan ambience. Yeah. Um, so it's the cultural, the cultural yeah, context. Yeah, also. cultural context also. Also, uh, to answer that, I think uh, you need to look at the economics of it. In those days, there might have been few books competing for attention. Mm -hmm. One of the first book published in uh, Goa, that's the author's uh, Colloquies. they say that it's the book with the largest number of mistakes in the world someone has a job half seriously said but still you could sell it because it has so much inf uh, information mm -hmm. today you have one problem where uh, like drug stores we have so many books around that there is a gap in terms of competition so you are looking for the most attractive so the, there is pressure to to you know attract through every means there is also a theory that if someone sees a cover seven or eight times they will probably end up buying the book that is the theory i don't know how far it's true but uh, this is a stated that's theory that's like that's the advertising subliminal advertising concept you keep putting it's it like everywhere yeah 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 when they see it everywhere 
they are going to but right now there's too there's a there's a limit to that you overdo it it becomes a blind spot because the way people overshare on instagram facebook everywhere at the point it starts hurting you you're like forget it i don't want it too much too much too push much, too much yeah. push o- over exposure is not good just you you got a chance to have a say in your cover design of your book uh, her I book did. is called starfish pickle lovely story uh, for young young adults set in goa and the great illustrations she's uh, done fantastic uh, you know it's mm-hmm. one of my to be honest it's one of my failure stories failure <laughs> stories because although we are such good friends i am not into fiction and i just couldn't help her and uh, you know i kept putting off reading the book not because it's bad but because i'm so terrible at fiction and then at the end i said bina if nothing else works i will help you with it and that perhaps must have shaken her a bit she did she got a good deal <laughs> they in fact were talking about making a movie out of it and all that so only thing is that uh, her lovely illustrations which we were talking about making postcards yeah, economics yeah, they, was a problem they kind of reduced okay. them She's got lovely illustrations yeah, there's so many things you have a copy here i don't have very bad very i bad. thought broadway would keep it but <laughs> No, no, it's like pa- it's like pa- stalking <laughs> drugs. No, it's it's very difficult to. Did they allow you to design huh. your cover? Yeah, I did uh, design, uh, which was uh, I think part of the deal where they said only if she can design the cover, like uh, uh, she'll do it. <laughs> Means you, 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 you put it down that you wanted to. No, do. my agent. Agent put it down because he said she's a designer. Let her do her. They agreed. Cover. They agreed to it. It was yours. It was mine. So what is the cover? Um, it's uh, actually yes, show, not show. Phone. It's called Starfish Pickle, and actually, the daughter, uh, your daughter is a scuba diver, right? Mm-hmm. So the protagonist is a scuba diver from Sarigama. But she wrote the novel. Before. She wrote the novel before knowing about yeah, Gabriella. Yeah, exactly. And, and I told her, I told her this person exists. I said you are writing about a person who exists. Oh and it's a very uh, unusual novel have a look at it i think i've seen it it's a kind of center the image yeah, is in the center yeah there's an upside the, down uh, uh, diver yeah, yeah. Uh, i think i've seen it i think we have it at home it's okay that's great yeah. okay yeah this is the cover yes. Yes. yes yes your design yeah so even with this it was like um it was just meant to be starfish pickle but instead of that they put the goan adventure above because they felt you have to put For goa marketing, just yeah. To, yeah make it clear yeah and um i had done another design in the book itself there's a uh, there's a very uh, there's an illustration which i like the most is of a woman sitting inside a bell jar so i'd i'd use that but then they felt it it's a little too dark and then she was naked mm-hmm. so then i even kind of photoshopped a swimsuit on her like covered her up completely in bicycle shorts this was a regular costume i had to kind of Chup, increase chup, yeah. the size to make it look like bicycling shorts slightly close to the clo- okay to the camera but oh, all full dive suit would have been good <laughs> yeah i know but i i guess because now like swimsuit swimmers themselves are using all those uh, anti drag full suits so yeah so then i said okay but um, that cover was better this was just very striking so in such a small size so they, they looked at it in this size literally this size on a uh, mobile they said okay can the yeah okay starfish pickle can be read the name can be read So these are the things. This is how they yeah. check. You know, so in such a small size, it has to stand. The color combinations which uh, Bina comes out with are quite amazing, and uh, you won't realize the you sciences, the sciences yeah, no. of the okay. of the color. Ivan, Ivan, you are welcome any time. <laughs> <laughs> so the color combinations are, are you know, there's a lot in that. Anyway, any other questions? We can we can wind up. Well, you ask. What should I have said? Any other? Looking back, what would you have done differently? Last question. If if. Uh, uh, now I find all my covers are shitty. So I mean, I'm always. Uh, <laughs> no, that's true I'm, with all of us. Yeah, that's true. See, so we don't like our earlier work. Now, yeah. one week back work, we we feel that we could have done. We we could have done much better. But we are grateful for all her work. No doubt. So uh, I I try as far as possible to keep. 
doing different things every time. You remember at one point I was just doing like rust, earth colors, like you know. Then you said do more blues, and I went to a phase of blues. I was so, going to ask about favorite colors. Right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, books are kind of republished, and you change the cover. Yeah, so editions. Also can be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you didn't like it. Either. Yes, mm -hmm. but how many of them go for it? I don't. Know. It's costly, it's costly. costly. Very often, even when, like, uh, Frederick very often publishes uh, international publishers from Portugal, etc. And they want to release author. yeah, authors here. Yeah. And, but they still want to keep the same cover. Oh. So, like, they, they should allow the author. Maybe that's a thing with the publisher. Yeah. They want to keep the cover. The publisher will probably say, yeah, you can publish it in Goa, but keep the same cover. That, that might be part of the contract. Actually, we have a lot of uh, leeway there. Like, for example, Nuno Kunya's book on the forts of Goa. Mm -hmm. It's totally different from his academic uh, title there, which you have created with yeah. a beautiful picture of the forts. Mm -hmm. So that way, we've not only I have found authors say that I want my friend to design. That's okay. You know, so that, it, because they have that closeness, yeah. you know, so I, I then I take yeah, a hands off position. I take hands off and, and nor do I want to compete with like it's you yeah. know it's like mother's cooking you know <laughs> no restaurant can compete with that so when somebody says my friend or my brother or my sister is going to design I say please I will never be able to match up to that that closeness is there yeah thank you so much for all the insights you've given us uh, Veena in spite of the short preparations and things like that but there's a big story to tell there and one day one day she's threatening to tell her story as a designer in Goa and I think she's got a title for her book also already coming up, which is, uh, you told me, no, vodka in the fridge, what, what? No, no, that is my story in, advertising. like, advertising, doing advertising for Goa, about, because I used to organize rock shows with a friend and, uh, Battle of the Bands, Battle of the Bands, and uh, the way rock, rock shows and rock music runs in Goa is the, uh, liquor companies will give you booze and then you're supposed to sell that and mm. that's the money. Cigarette companies in the past. Cigarette yeah. companies I guess are not allowed yeah. now so. So when I came to Goa I thought okay so like my first PowerPoint presentations I was making when people had not even seen laptops and all here in Goa. So like nicely making slabs of you know for title sponsorship so many lakhs for this sponsorship that many lakhs. <laughs> like this friend the friend who's organizing it comes with these cartons of beer. It's like, here's sponsorship. I said, what do you want to do with this? We have to sell it and that's our money. So at one point in time, I was like so badly off in Goa that I could not afford water, but there was vodka in my refrigerator. So that's going to be the title of my memoir. It will be no money for water, but there's vodka in my refrigerator. On that high point, we must end here. Veena, really thank you so much, uh, not only for today evening, but for all the covers you've done with so much patience. At all the times of the day and night and uh, Vianca. And uh, you know, those kind of problems. So really, thanks, thanks, thanks so much. Thank you all for listening.